Hi, my name is Andrew and I'm going to present a plugin I wrote called switch.vim. First of all, why did I write it? What's the problem it solves? I code a lot of Ruby and I write my tests using the RSpec test framework. In RSpec, assertions are made using the should and should not methods. I often create some test data and assert that some properties hold or don't hold on that data. And I realized that it would help to have a simple way to switch between should and should not. So I wrote a simple mapping that does that. Eventually, though, I noticed a similar problem in a few other cases. For example, CoffeeScript arrows. In CoffeeScript, there are two types of arrows, single and double. Usually, uh, I write single arrows, um, but I change them to double ones when I need to bind this to a certain context. Again, being able to quickly change between these two and then carry on with what I was doing turned out to be pretty useful. And if you notice the dynamic languages, here's a C++ example. If this reference changes to a pointer, I have to go around and change all these dots into arrows. I don't code a lot of C++, so there might be an easier way to do this, but for me, this annoyance can be at least partially solved by the switch plugin. So, how does it actually work? Let's see. First of all, I'm going to define a global variable called switch definitions, which is a list of items. In this case, this item is a list of itself holding two values, true and false. If I source this file, and I execute the switch command, it's going to change the true into false, and vice versa. Now, I can add a maybe here, and now it's going to change between true, false, and maybe. Uh, from now on, I'm not going to execute the switch command explicitly. I'm just going to use a mapping. And I'm also not going to source this file explicitly. I'm going to use a mapping for that as well. Um, so, I'm also going to switch into this kind of formatting. This is a multi-line uh, definition to make it a bit easier to add new entries. So now, uh, let's start by implementing the should example. I should and I should not here. Uh, this is simple enough. So now I'm going to execute the switch command and this changes the should into should not, but there's a bit of a snag um, since should is contained into should not. So now um, I'm going to add a simple a space here and now it's going to work. So, uh, not perfect, but really this is the shorthand version of the definition, which is not the true power of the plugin. Now, uh, I'm going to take this definition here. And now this will allow me to change between these two styles of hashes. Um, in, these are both uh, valid uh, syntaxes in Ruby, uh, except one is uh, the new syntax, which I've been having difficulties getting used to, so this mapping has been very useful to me in the last couple of weeks. Um, as you can imagine, this uh, can't be done with a simple word substitution. Uh, in this case, the definition is a dictionary, where the keys are regular expressions, and the values are substitutions. This one reads as a colon, some keyword characters, white space, and a hash rocket, and it gets replaced with these keyword characters and a con. And um, the second one is easy to decipher pretty much the same way. Now, let's take a look at CoffeeScript arrows. In this case, I could easily use the shorthand version. And this works. But if I'm elsewhere on the line, it won't work. And um, this is normal because this is how the plugin works. It looks for a definition under the cursor. This is important because you might have several definitions on a single line. So um, what I would like to do, however, is be able to change the arrow from anywhere on the line because if I'm already here, then really I could just change it in uh, any other way. Yeah. And to do this, I'm going to take this here pattern. And now it works just as I expected. Um, so, in this case, I'm just grabbing the entire line and leaving it unchanged. Simple enough. But what happens if we have a different switch here? For example, can I switch it true to false? Well, yes, I can. And the reason is uh, that because the plugin attempts to switch the smallest substitution. In this case, the true is much smaller than this match because this match captures the entire line. Um, and, and I think this is a good, um, a good uh, uh, pattern because you can easily switch uh, the other definition by moving away from the true, as you can see. But um, if the priorities were in order, you would not be able to do that. 
All right, so as for the C++ example, um, it's also simple enough. Let me take this one here. And now, I'm just going to execute the switch command here. As you can see, it works just fine. And if I had another entry here, we're able to change both of them easily. Um, notice that I've also added some keyword characters here to make it a bit easier. You don't actually have to be on the dot. You can be on the word preceding the dot. Um, and the next example I'd like to show is this one. It's in eRuby. Um, it's a templating language, and it's a simple if clause. Basically, if there are any errors, you want to show an error message. Otherwise, I want to show something else. And these can be pretty complicated, and I'd like to be able to see them in the, uh, you know, in the entire page. To do this, the simplest way I can think of is to just to add a true or here, which will always go in this branch. Um, but it gets a bit more complicated if the condition is more complicated and you know, it, it gets more involved to type. So and this is what we have the switch plugin for. So now if I hit the switch button, as you can see, it changes between the normal condition, true or the condition, false and the condition, which goes in this branch and goes back to the normal condition. This has been very useful in debugging purposes. And another debugging example is the tap one. Um, this is a Ruby, some Ruby codes, a chain of method calls. Now, if we wanted to check what the output of the chain is so far from the comments, uh, from the comments method, um, I could extract it to a variable and then dump it. But this is still a bit uh, annoying. So instead, um, I'm going to use the tap method that Ruby provides, which basically allows me to tap into this object and then return it to continue the chain. Um, except it's still a bit difficult to type, but it's easy to automate. Uh, as you can see, by switching, I'm just going, uh, I add a tap here, but um, there's actually a bit of a problem here, as you can see. This gets confused with the C++ example, so I'm going to remove the C++ example for now. And it doesn't get confused anymore. Add the tab, remove the tab. Great. Um, now, the good thing is, in practice, you don't actually have to remove the C++ pattern because you can easily define a buffer local variable, switch definitions. Um, and this will only have effect in, in this current buffer. So you can just add a FT plugin, add this into FT plugin cpp.vim, and it will have effect only in C++ files. If you insist on placing it in your vimrc or something like that, you can just prefix it with an auto command file type cpp. And this is highly recommended because most of these are um, you know, file type specific anyway. Um, and another thing you may have noticed is that these patterns actually tend to get uh, fairly complicated. Um, and um, all the examples I showed you are already implemented. So you can use them out of the box, but they're my own little time savers and they might not be useful to you. The idea of the plugin is to let you find substitutions that you do on a regular basis that break your flow, distract you from whatever else you're doing, and then just optimize them away. If you want to do this, you're probably going to have to poke around in the regular expressions. Um, personally, I think that's a good thing. Um, even if you don't use this plugin, this um, will be very useful to you while using Vim. Um, so I highly encourage you to do so. In the future, I intend to add an option to execute any Vim key sequence as well. So you could even use this plugin to uh, bookmark macros associated with certain patterns. Um, if you're interested in this kind of substitution, but you'd rather not go that deep down the customization hole, you could take a look at toggle.vim or cycle.vim, um, which provide a similar functionality, though as far as I know, it's just limited to changing single words. Um, you could also just use the built-in substitutions given by switch.vim without customizing them at all if you find them useful. I highly recommend you read up on the entire documentation with a help switch. Um, there are a few examples that I haven't uh, shown and you can read up more on how you can customize this plugin um, you know, more or uh, more easily than what I've shown you. Finally, this is a plugin I recently wrote, so there's bound to be bugs. If you find, find any, please open up a GitHub issue um, and uh, feel free to open up issues for future requests as well. And also, if you think of some clever substitution that saves you time, I might consider adding it as a built-in to help other people out as well. So, thank you for watching and happy learning.